So do you want the good news or bad news first? I ask, this pati- I ask that question to my patients all the time. But in your case, I'm going to give you the bad news first. Statistically, half the number of the people sitting in this room right now has a chronic disease. It could be hypertension, diabetes, autoimmune disorders, depression, or something else. That's right. One half of the country has a chronic disease, and one in four has multiple chronic diseases. These conditions have become a national and global epidemic. And as we know, modern medicine is the most advanced it's ever been, and we're spending the most money we ever have on healthcare, but we're also the sickest we've ever been. In fact, for the first time in our history, children born today have a lower life expectancy than their parents. Even doctors are affected by these statistics. But here is the good news. Chronic disease, in the most part, are diseases of our choices. I chose my chronic disease. It didn't choose me. And there's something you might not know yet. There is an unconventional prescription. You. You are your best medicine. And that's why I'm here. I know that you have within you the power to access abundant health, well-being, and vitality. But it took me over 12 years practicing as a medical doctor and my own experience with chronic disease to realize this. My journey began when my family fled post-war Vietnam. My parents grabbed me, a handful of worldly possessions, and boarded this ship with over 2,000 refugees sailing to a better future. We were docked in Manila Bay for eight months, and I nearly died of dysentery. I became the only surviving baby. We were then transferred to a Philippine refugee camp, and after three months, a Catholic church sponsored us to America. I grew up in Chinatown, Los Angeles, a poor immigrant neighborhood, but I was lucky. I was able to be transferred to a really good school in a more affluent area of town. Not so lucky when I got there. I was teased for being different, for being poor, for the holes in my hand-me-down clothes, for the stinky food my mom cooked. The kids would often say, hey, go back to your home country, chinky. And I remember my revenge would be to show them off, to become famous, to be able to inspire like Tony Robbins, make people laugh like Robin Williams, or move like Mick Jagger. But I often wondered why none of my heroes looked like me. At the time, there was no Asian motivational speaker, comedian, or rock star. In fact, the only representation of people that were supposed to represent me in the media were images like this. And so for the longest time, like some of you, I just wanted to be something or someone else. I wanted to be whiter. I wanted to be richer. I wanted to be taller, more American. I wanted to live in a different neighborhood. And I didn't realize this then, but that desire to be somebody else was actually the seed for my future illness. So I didn't become a comedian or a rock star because it seemed out of reach. So my mom generously gave me three options, a doctor, a physician, or an MD. So I went to medical school. I worked long, hard hours, and my career took off. I became the chief of interventional radiology at St. Joseph's Medical Center. Bought a fancy house, fancy car. I even flew around the world to give these fancy medical speeches. But underneath this white coat, I was sick, and it developed several chronic diseases. Sexy, right? I was overweight, diabetic, hypertensive, and it was on several prescription medicines, even ones to help me fall asleep. And I felt horrible, not only because I was sick, but because I was living a lie. I mean, how do I look a patient in the eye and tell them to take care of their health when I'm a walking chronic disease statistic myself? And so one day I was feeling particularly sorry for myself, and I was rounding in the hospital to pick up a chart for the next patient. 43-year-old male, terminal, pancreatic cancer. I was supposed to drain 10 liters of fluid from his belly. And I'm bracing myself 
to walk into this room of despair. I open the door, and there's Ishmael sitting up, smiling at me. Smiling. He goes, hey, Doc, how are you, man? And I said, Ishmael, how are you so positive right now? He says, Doc, it's easy. I'm just so grateful to be alive, and every moment I'm here, I choose to spread love and joy. Whoa, here's a guy who's about to die, teaching me about how to consciously live, reminding me that no matter what life circumstances, we always have a choice on how we show up and who we get to be. You know, in medicine, when the body's physiology is out of alignment, it could put your heart into a fatal or deadly rhythm. But in such instances, it is still possible to shock the heart and reset it back to a normal sinus rhythm. My life was very similarly out of alignment. But Ishmael's words inspired me to press reset. And that put me on a path of living the life I was meant to live and reversing my chronic disease. Now, before I move on, I need to make a very important distinction. Acute and chronic diseases are two separate things altogether. Acute conditions usually have an identifiable cause, such as infection or trauma. Conventional medicine is great at treating acute conditions. Somebody has a pneumonia, we give them an antibiotic. Somebody has an inflamed gallbladder, we surgically take it out. Chronic diseases, like hypertension and diabetes, they're more insidious, and they develop over time. And although genetics may predispose us to getting chronic disease, they're usually the result of a combination of root causes, many including controllable lifestyle factors that make up the environment of our cells. Now, in his TED Talk, Dr. Rangan Chatterjee said this, our genes may load the gun, but it's the environment that pulls the trigger. And I would add, it's our choices that are the bullets. See, modern medical care is so focused on managing symptoms with medications that we often fail to eliminate the root causes of illness. But these symptoms, the elevated blood pressure, the elevated blood sugars, the insomnia, they're not asking for more medications. They're actually signals from our body asking us to take back our power and to step into the fullness of who we really are. And that's why I was sick, because I was denying who I was. Sure, I became this successful medical doctor, but I got in here for all the wrong reasons. I'm embarrassed to say I didn't become a physician only to help people or because my mom made me. I became a physician to be respected. I used this white coat to hide the not enoughness and shame I was feeling inside. You see, I climbed this mountain to success only to discover I climbed the wrong mountain. You see, at the hospital, I was expected to be serious, stoic, and strong, which is a problem because I'm a goofball. I'm an artist. I like to make people laugh but I shrank who I was. I dimmed my light because as one supervisor told me, Vu, there ain't no comedy in medicine. Don't ask me why it sounds like Mr. T. <laughs> but after that encounter with Ishmael, I pressed reset. I started to explore the artist in me. I started to do more public speaking, creating funny and inspirational online content. I even became the host of a show called Behind the White Coat. That's right. A comedic talk show blending health, education, and a little Hollywood. This was the beginning of the journey that reversed my chronic disease. And here's the best part. Science supports that our choices and living on purpose are our best medicine. There's a field of study called epigenetics. Epi meaning above, genetics genes. Which demonstrate how external factors above the genes actually control how they behave. It tells us that it is our choices that make up the environment of our cells, which then dictate how our genes are activated or expressed. Now, over 95% of all chronic diseases have lifestyle components. How well we eat, whether we sleep enough, exercise enough, whether we have a supportive community. Even the thoughts that we think and the emotions we feel contribute to whether or not we get disease. Epigenetic research also tells us that if we could tap into states of eudaimonic happiness or that joy that you feel when you have a deep sense of meaning or purpose in your life, that actually activates genes in your body for better health. 
decreases inflammation, increases immunity. It even lengthens these things called telomeres, which extend the longevity of your cells. This is your body's way of rewarding you for living your truth and purpose. So how do you tap back into the purpose you were born with? Simple. Begin by thinking about the things that bring you joy. Maybe it's more time with your family. Maybe it's writing, painting, or maybe it's karaoke. Somewhere along the line, there was something you were good at, something you loved doing or dreamed of being, or that you wanted so bad it just kept you up at night. And maybe you let that go. But that thing, that thing's your passion. And if you could do that thing and serve others with that thing, if you share your passion with the world, that's your purpose. And your purpose is your medicine. Maybe start with 15 minutes, but you start doing more of that, and then something miraculous happens. You start waking up excited. You'll eat better, sleep better, because it's so much easier to make healthier choices for yourself when you're feeling good about yourself. Listen, not showing up as who we are or making us sick. Living a life of inauthenticity causes chronic elevations of stress hormones that can cause elevations of blood pressure, insulin resistance, and a host of numerous chronic diseases. The Austrian physician and Holocaust survivor, Viktor Frankl, said this, between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in this space is our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and freedom. And what he was saying reiterates Ishmael's point, that our power our growth, our freedom, our health actually begins with the choices that we make moment by moment by moment. And in making new choices, I'm happy to report, I'm an ideal weight. I'm free of prescription medicines and no longer have chronic disease. My healing began with a simple choice to accept, to love, and to live as the true me. The same is true for you. If you have symptoms in your life, your life is out of alignment. Don't wait for a shock. What if you chose to press reset right now to own the power of your choices? When you deny who you are, when you deny your purpose and passion in life, that puts a cap on your potential for health. Because you were born to be limitless, to feel exuberant, to bring something unique into this world. And if enough of us embrace and share this truth, together we can reverse the chronic disease epidemic. Remember, your purpose is you, and you are your best medicine. Thank you.